six months of resistance and three months of active struggle the time that has already nay down in history consolidation, steadfastness and determination. Unexpected for the regime, surprised and amazed the whole world. The intensity did not subside, despite threats of intimidation and provocation, lack of fear, which scared Lukashenko hysterically. I just like you did not quite understand what the problem is. Unknown and shocking details of the active phase of the struggle, and the most powerful moments, the footage of which flew around the planet. What will soon be written in history textbooks, we will repeat and fix it right now on the Nekta channel. The showdown between the United States and Iran, which almost led to the Third World, the fires in Australia, which made people finally really think about the environment, and the coronavirus, which knocked down not only the former lifestyle and haya of tens of millions of the world's inhabitants, but also forced us to change all our previous ideas about the modern the world. For the title of the most boring, predictable and expected event of the year, the recess of the Russian amendments. To the Constitution, the final withdrawal of Britain from the EU, the persistence of the French yellow vests and, perhaps, the presidential elections in Belarus. August 30, 2020, I think that this is most likely the date of the presidential elections in the Republic of Belarus. In the end, they did not dare to postpone the elections to the end of August, making a beautiful gift to their president right for his birthday. The presidential elections in Belarus are scheduled for August 9. It's just such a wonderful political start. And all because the Clouds over the cunningly combed head of the blue-footed man began to thicken very quickly, because various kinds of boars, pot-bellied bourgeois and mangy, suddenly began to declare their intention to participate in the presidential race. I thank everyone who helped us take this step. I am Sergei Tikhanovsky, a Belarusian entrepreneur and blogger, declare my intention to participate in the presidential Kane as a presidential candidate. In this case and this political cane, a huge number of people who simply do not know me. The rival of the onion grief, who suddenly appeared and became instantly popular among the people, was ordered not to give the slightest chance of fair competition in the face of a pandemic and the expected political apathy. It's nice to watch. On TV, people are working on the tractor, no one talks about viruses, there the tractor will cure everyone, the Field heals everyone. The agro Fuhrer himself did not waste time in vain, between rides on an ads for $270,000 and flights on an airplane with LDEN twine curtains, sometimes he still descended from heaven to earth to the people in order to thoroughly chatter the working class with horror stories about the danger of reforms. Variable privatization, which will sell and destroy the country, about the enemies from the West, who will prevent the most honest and transparent elections on the last island of stability, peace and tranquility in the center of Europe, in order to enslave and destroy. The president will be a man. I am absolutely convinced of this. True, they hurried, showed the ears from where they stick out. The workers did not believe in all this, to put it mildly, the storyteller himself t confused in his delirium, accusing Russia, the West, or those because of whom nothing is clear for the destabilization of the situation. Names Surnames, addresses, passwords, attendances are known, everything is known. We don't know what they are capable of, we don't even know who they are. Either these are Americans from NATO, or there is someone pressing us from Ukraine, or our Eastern brothers love us. 
so much. Meanwhile, Yermoshina was an anticipation of the successful staging of a one-actor theater. An interest in the upcoming elections was growing. Fifty-five applications were submitted to the Central Commission. Dot. That became an absolute record in the entire history of the newest Belarus. The Belarusians rallied, self-politicized and were ready to defend their votes. People have become much more independent, especially young people. Yarmashina had plenty to choose from. A total of 15 people were registered as applicants for candidates admitted to the collection of signatures for their candidacies. Among them, of course, is the old O's. Events began to develop rapidly, as soon as the initiative groups of candidates for candidates took to the streets, the streets were instantly filled with people. They lined up to sign. These lines would later be called the legendary chains of solidarity. Please stand in line, stretch out, show that there are many of us. What is important is what happens within society, because both snow and rain, everything can affect the marches. the demonstration movement, but no weather will change what is here and what is here. While people were actively signing up for their contenders, Lukashenko, Yermoshina and company were biting their elbows and thinking how to bring down the growing popular resolve. Smaller, you look on Instagram and Telegram channels for these supposedly long queues. You need Valery Pavlovich to give them photographs taken with quadrocopters or whatever. They are called Lukashenko's diagnosis, which did not allow the Belarusians to live in peace for 26 years. Began to manifest itself more sharply. The old man rushed from side to side and did not know how to conduct his cane in the absence of popular support. In Compe despair, he saw his support only in the Slovaki and spineless officials fed by their own tits. Oil was poured into the smoldering hotbed of dictatorial vanity and various opinion polls conducted by bloggers and independent internet resources, where the rating of the head of state still in force at that time was at the level of 3%. This became a reason for the people to realize the strength of their majority, and Lukashenko to plunge even more into the abyss of hopelessness. Who is the most enlightened in this audience who will believe that the incumbent has 3%? They themselves do not believe, so they have already stopped peddling this topic. All such polls were immediately banned under the threat of huge fines and administrative liability. And for himself the father decided to order his own desired rating, which he later handed over to the public under the guise of a secret document. Dot. But reality was not deceived by this, people continued to take to the streets, making it louder every day. And Lukashenko and his entourage continued to lose their nerves, the old methods were also used, threats, ensues, detentions, provocations, intimidation. When we witnessed that the authorities step by step begin to violate this legislation, when they cease to reckon with the opinions of people, when they begin to ensue, ensue us. As then, the leaders of the political opposition at the time, who, in principle, were actually three alternative candidates, which, well, really were alternative. And when they began to ensue all Belarusians in general, all our supporters, when they stopped reckoning with their voices. That is, in reality it happened. People stood in lines, people gave their signatures. For me, for Viktor Babariko, who, incidentally, has a birthday today. They gave signatures for us. The authorities simply took these signatures, crumpled them up and threw them into the trash can. It was just such a gross disregard that was the expression of the will of the Belarusians. The Compe disregard for their desires and, in general, it was as if it became obvious to everyone that they were no longer considered one of the first under the rink of repression was the well-known people's blogger Sergei Tikhanovsky, who had not previously passed the casting of Yermoshina to participate in the electoral production. He was detained at the picket of his wife, who was registered as a weak candidate who did not pose any threat to the regime. It is interesting. 
that not only traditional Lukashenka prostitutes in uniform were used for this provocation, but also those who had been hooked with them for a long time. People did not want to put up with such a situation, and began the first decisive resistance. However, Tikhanovsky was still not released, accusing him of all mortal sins and later, after the third search attempt, they found $900,000 behind the sofa. Dot. At the dacha of the blogger Tikhanovsky's mother, 900,000 US dollars were found. Note. Not 2 million not 500,000, but the amount required for the presidential cane, the revolution. Meanwhile, in one of the 18 residences of the Sklav bandit, a 26-year-old organ continued to play. About flour for three days, sandals and whips. For three days there was flour left in Minsk to bake bread. Collecting the crumbs, creating this blooming country, they did not do so that they would privatize this country and these poor fellows who always walked under the lash around the world. But this has already become boring. People have ceased to be afraid of even harsh detentions, arrests of members of initiative. Groups, activists and bloggers. Fear, the main method of illegally retaining power, has already ceased to work. By its actions, the authorities have created several challenges to society, namely, here are a few. That society, people simply could not swallow. And so today it has already become a matter of principle for many, and very many people are simply not ready to stop and will. To the end, I think that ultimately we are now in a situation of the deepest political crisis, which will last until the moment Lukashenko leaves in one form or another, and protests can take different forms, and they are already taking many different forms. And this is undoubtedly a consequence of, again, not expectations or surprises, not errors or correct predictions, this is not a consequence of any kind of expertise or the absence of such. This is a consequence of a compelling incorrect and inadequate course of action that the authorities have chosen and continue to choose now. The protest only grew, which was certainly reflected in the psyche of the mosaic. He began to threaten his own people with mass executions of civilians. Fort Howe former President Karimov suppressed the putsch in Andion. He shot thousands of people, everyone condemned him. And when he died, they stood on their knees sobbing, crying. We have not experienced this, so we do not want to understand this. Well, we will remind you. In parallel with this, the sterilization of the elections continued. Even then it became clear that there would be no international observers. The mission of the OSCE Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights was simply not invited to Belarus. And the Belarusians themselves were cut off from any opportunity to control the course of the elections with the help of manipulations. Due to the coronavirus, which is not visible, the number of observers was limited to three people, and at the polling stations they were banned from photographing their ballots and left the curtains open in order to prevent the discovery of massive falsifications. The only ones who were allowed to freely observe the course of the elections were the legendary Yubatki. The main opponent of Lukashenko at that time was the former banker and philanthropist Viktor Babariko. Who was personally awarded by the 3% one. No one believed that the president was ready so brazenly and cynically, even before the registration of candidates, to deal with. Who was the clear favorite in the presidential race? He took a chance, knowing what kind of system we have and what. country we live in. This has never happened in the history of Belarus. When it became clear that Lukashenko was tackling Babariko, the dictator immediately declared, the ex-banker has nothing to fear. Him prepare for a private struggle. He is involved there, not involved. The authorities are putting pressure on someone. This, again, I read in the media. This is how I swear to God that I don't need it now in the election cane. I want him to do the polls. A few days later, Viktor Babariko was detained. None of them will become prisoners of conscience. All these inmates, there are already about 30 of them. The Belarusians could not stand such impudence. 
що коли діючить крику Божі брутально чи вранчуву, то їх поспіх, поспіх їх дірона фону буде ще хучий. А що трималося на дворі? Тебе затримали е, е, господаря Тихановського. Сподіваюся, що люди вже не спокійно і не спокоїлися. Не супокоїлися. Вони затримали Віктора і Бабарика. А гэта ніяким чином не поплывало. Все у них обидналися вокруг Светланы Тихановской. И вот каждое это затримание, на самом речи, оно только утягало еще больше, оно еще больше политизировало громадство, утягало еще больше, больше людей по весь этот процесс. Бо когда задуматься, Светлану Тихановскую призначили кандидатской президенту 14-го липика. On the same evening kilometer long chains of solidarity began to form in the capital and other cities. The authorities were shocked by what they saw they found nothing better on emotions than just trying to repeat the triumph of independent candidates. We will once again, and all those who are now writing some stupid comments, who say, guys, why are they here? Who are writing all this nonsense and crap? You are Kampe. I don't know who. I will not call you in other words, but we are together and we are for our President Alexander Gryarevich Lukashenko, but this could hardly have been done. Beautifully with the help of the assembled Belarusian Republican Youth Union, a modern analog of the notorious Hitler Youth. I am for this country and I support the current president and I support the peace that we have which we can so easily lose thanks to people who do not value peace, they just want to seize this power in this country. The tension in the air over Belarus grew every day, and the repressions against the main opponents of the regime intensified. Even then, hundreds of not only civilians detained at the protests, but also well-known public figures, activists and bloggers were behind bars. Grey Cat, on Brain, People's Reporters Petrukin and Kabovev, Pavel Spirin, Pavel Sevierinets, Nikolai Stakovich, Ir Lasik. The rest of the dissenters remained in the country for three days. Lukashenko thought so and ordered Yarmashina not to play democracy, but to register. Only the safest and most reliable candidates for herself. Refuse the rest under various formal pretexts. We are sure that the authorities are not currently supported by the majority. Deny registration as a presidential candidate Viktor Dmitrievich Babariko, Valery Sepkalo. Register Ms. Tikhanovskaya, despite a significant mistake, to register Lukashenko. Alexander Gryarevich. The saddest thing is that an experienced politician could not even imagine how wrong he was when he gave the ahead for the registration of Svetlana Tikhanovskaya as a presidential candidate. He was still sure that no one will vote for a wife in Belarus. Our constitution is not for a woman, and our society is not ripe to vote for a woman. Because according to our constitution, the president has strong power. But the non-registration of Victor. Babariko and Valery Sepkalo again forced people to take to the streets. It was then that Belarus first began to use decisive methods of self-defense against punishers in balaclavas and bandits in black. Coupling of defense of their own and even a counter-offensive. From what they saw, the system began to lose its nerves and the next day they even began to detain people who were just standing in line at the CEC to appeal against its yesterday's decision. Alternative candidates did not give the authorities a single opportunity to catch their breath and come to their senses, striking blow after blow, one of the most powerful and unexpected. Decisions was the merger of the main headquarters of the candidates Sepkalo, Babariko and Tikhanovskaya. They say it was the fastest political decision in the history of Belarus. The Belarusians have regained hope for peaceful change, rallying around a single candidate. The tremendous success of the trio, which traveled around the cities for two weeks, collecting the largest rallies in the history of Belarus, was beyond Words. A huge queue of thousands of people standing to sign for Aernative. Candidates who entered this cane and are now under repression, this is Viktor Babariko. Who is behind bars, this is Sergei Tikhanovsky who is also in prison, Valery. Sepkalo who left the country under pressure. 
Then there were rallies of many thousands in the regions in whose small towns there had never been such processes and people had never come out. This feeling of some kind of process of change, it very much inspired the whole country and instilled confidence in people that they could bring these changes themselves. When you are on stage and there are so many people, you understand that any provocation can lead to some kind of victims. When you somewhere to another city and realize that They are stopping you on the road and you simply will not get there, and people are waiting for you. This is a different fear, but it constantly pursued you. And emotions can be remembered. There was a sea of joy. Tears, happiness, fear for the safety of children. When the authorities realized that they had almost compelly lost control of the situation, they entered the manuals of 15 years a cancellation of rallies of candidates. Under various pretexts and propaganda staging, gunmen with weapons in the forest and Wagnerites in the presidential sanatorium. The group was organized and burned by military standards. Moreover, all of its members have combat experience in various hotspots on the planet. And a how later the militants will be quietly returned to their owners without trial or investigation. The horror stories about revolutions will not stop. There will be no maiden. No matter how someone would like it. The peculiarity of revolutions is that elements of external interference have already appeared. As well as the rallies will not stop. Despite their illegal prohibitions, one of the highlights of the election came was the inclusion of a song for change at a pro vermint rally organized by the regime's lackeys to annoy Tikhanovskaya, and even though the music played for a short time, And even though the authorities took revenge on these DJs of changes, their act inspired thousands of Belarusians to continue their decisive struggle. Over the past week, Alexander Lukashenko was very nervous and we were not allowed to hold a single rally in Minsk, but we all didn't try to hold them and make them nervous by the fact that we tried. Alexander Lukashenko was forced to act not according to his own scenario and now our task and the tasks of the Belarusian society is not to continue to act according to his scenario, but to impose our own scenario. It was then that the first rumors of the excessive crewy of the punitive system began to appear. It became obvious that Lukashenko is ready not only to rig the elections, but also to seize power by force. At that time, early voting was in full swing in the country, during which large-scale falsifications began and the non-admission of independent observers to polling stations. Tell me, what are you guided by not Ting and the observer Yuri Kovshare? I don't want to be filmed on video, you can't take the members of the commission. Why? There is a solution. The notorious status of the IT country played a cruel joke with the short-sighted usurper. Almost the entire country could watch online how the Belarusians were robbed of their choice. A number of platforms are both voice and honest people, and Bison published a report on election fraud. This is additional information that voting protocols were not published in 77% of the polling stations. Dot. When some of our officials now say that someone blocked the activities of precinct commissions, someone tried to influence them there. Sorry, I have a very clear question. Why were the protocols of the voting recess not published in 77% of precincts? Which is provided for by law. Why subsequently did they never see the light of day? And a how they did not dare to anger the people this time with large-scale corrals for early voting. They could not refuse to draw a space turnout. Finally, the main voting day came. No one expected such a rush at the polling stations. People lined up in kilometer-long queues to vote for an alternative candidate. The falsifiers even had to transform into industrial climbers, taking out the wrong ballots from the sites. Guarded by valiant bag carriers in uniform. Towards evening, it became clear that the precinct commissions simply do not have time to accept everyone. Many polling stations were closed late, while Yarmashina from the TV screens declared about 80% support for the usurper in the areas where they were afraid to falsify votes under pressure from people, they already declared the victory of Svetlana Tikhanovskaya with might and main. 
Where the falsifications were successful, armed servants of the regime began prudently to gather. for the subsequent quiet removal of their future cellmates. And I had to order the army to be evacuated in armored vehicles. This is... unacceptable. And that's how it all started. After it finally became clear that the will of the people was again stolen, people again took to the streets en masse. It was then that the internet began to disappear for the first time in Belarus. It was then that the first blood was shed on the city streets. Lukashenko decided to do. Even those who used to laugh at the label of a bloody dictator shuddered at what they saw. In just one night, about 3,000 citizens were detained throughout the country. All the isolation wards were overcrowded, people were in gyms and in the territory of police stations, where they were brutally bullied. You were with them and you listened to their conversations all the time, your hearing as a whole is very sharpened when you are constantly practically unable to look anywhere. Their brutality was driven by a rather specific purpose. That is, these were people who were very competently explained, somehow brainwashed that each of these people are those who will not you live in peace. From the very morning of the 10th, the country was unrecognizable, military equipment on the streets of cities, military men, with weapons and deathly silence. Belarus froze in anticipation. What's next? Lukashenko almost. immediately thanked the security officials, who had arranged a bloody meat grinder from the country the day before. The usurper was sure that the Belarusians would no longer come out. They say all the organizers have been detained, the situation is under control. There are a lot of drunks, with drugs, horror. Therefore, we are reacting very harshly so that God forbid to prevent this fire. Despite the information vacuum and the absence of any information about what was happening, on the evening of August 10, Belarusians again took to the streets of their cities. Many of them personally. saw yesterday's atrocities committed by the security forces. Beating, flash and noise grenades. Water cannons, shooting, assayas on people, blood. The night from 10 to the 11th of August became a point of no return. Both for the entire Belarusian people and for the bloody dictator. The entire civilized world has destroyed the last idea of an island of stability and tranquility in the center of Europe. All the boundaries of what was permissible were erased when the roof of the security forces was ripped off from impunity. People were not only detained, beaten, maimed and raped, but also started to kill. Lukashenko understands perfectly well, if he now loses power, they will kill him. Will kill. They will not just be judged, but killed. Putin is well aware of this too. They are very similar here. Because just recently, Putin passed this law that the ex-president will receive lifelong immunity, guarantees, and senatorial status. I am sure that Lukashenko will come up with the same thing soon. What unseemly. Excuse will be formed so that it s into the shadows. 
but he will never give up power, he, like Nazarbayev, understands this very well. These people will be in power until the end of their lives. And it depends on the population of the country. Exactly how the lives of these criminals will end. On the morning of August 11, thanks to a slight relaxation of the blocking of the internet, shocking information about the events of the last nights began to seep into the masses. I was shocked by the horror that I saw on telegram channels. When the authorities nevertheless turned on the internet. And that morning, at 6 in the morning, I started calling friends, acquaintances, and both women and men told me that, we are crying, we are just crying from the horror. Bullying, violence that was in relation to ordinary Belarusian citizens. When we already saw footage related to the killings and the use of force by law enforcement agencies, this was another shake up. This greatly influenced me psychologically. While the propaganda continued to broadcast about gunmen threatening the state, many of those who had previously worked for this state began to write en masse statements of their resignation. In the evening, the protests did not stop. Just as the brutality and murder did not stop, the authorities realized that shutting down the internet alone was not enough. A massive hunt for journalists, bloggers and all people with technology began. They smashed the phone and, in general, began to beat them, again threatening that, we'll kill you now. You'll stay here, tell us your coordinators, what did you do at the crossroads, and in that spirit in. General. They beat, beat, and s just say. I stopped at that. I only remember that they beat me. On the hands, I covered my face, I was lying on the ground. They broke our left arm, it still does not move well. And. Already when I lost consciousness, I do not know what happened next. I don't know because I came to my senses. When I was already in the ambulance, which was exactly there, it was standing near the road. At that time, very few people still understood what was happening, but I can, as it were, judge only by the reviews that I heard. But people are watching the situation very closely, I can say so. That is, young people. Especially those who watch YouTube, are of course among the protesters because it seems to me common. Sense in this country. But in general, the important thing is that we are following this very really closely. From the point of view of what is interesting, how it all turns out in the end. I managed to escape into the courtyards, where a man drove me to the emergency hospital, where they gave me first aid, had an operation, took out a bull, and put three stitches. I had a broken nose, craniocerebral. and concussion. I was one of the first to arrive at the hospital, there was only a girl with a broken head, later they brought in guys who were very badly beaten. I remember a guy, I couldn't even see his eyes, he was sitting next to me, and the spine seemed to be broken. Some of the guys were brought with an escort, the police stood straight and watched everything. I asked the doctors not to write that a shot from an air gun. had been fired at me, but the doctor apologized and could not do anything. Because the convoy was watching everything. When the Belarusians saw and finally realized what Lukashenko had done to civilians, the wave of popular anger turned into massive chains of solidarity. Unrest broke out at factories as well, and strikes were being prepared. Lukashenko feared them and continues to fear them most to this day. Why did it start? The fact that people just went out of the entrances. Into the courtyards and began to get to know each other. And I think the most important thing now is to repeat the same thing at the factories. A workshop at the same enterprise. If there are 500 of them in the workshop and 300 of them stop production, then no manager can do absolutely anything with this workshop. Many. Famous personalities and ordinary Belarusians began to massively refuse state awards. 
certificates and diplomas. The protest began to move into a new plane, now it was not only on the streets, but also in the social, economic, political, informational, choral, sports and other spaces of the country. The protests settled in the heads. Despite the pain, suffering, and horror that we all experienced this August, today's Belarusians delight and inspire me. Actors and aides recorded video messages, doctors went out in white coats and joined the chain of solidarity, transport workers and workers prepared strikes, security forces and military. Personnel fired and massively burned their uniforms. The security forces almost compelly disappeared from the city streets. Lukashenko realized that he had nay too far. The authorities took a break. In the following days, almost every corner of the country began its own protest. The cities that never came out were filled with people. The authorities tried in every possible way to deny violence, while more and more new, more cruel. Facts of this very violence appeared in the media. A splinter of sneakers tore apart, I looked at my leg. There was generally a full mince. But I pulled myself up, crawled to the flowerbed, there were practically no people there. One guy flies. Grabbed me by the arms. I reached the Veronica store and then it was simply unrealistic to get through. To the ambulance, but the girls there began to catch the first car they came across, and in the first. car they saw, the handsome men immediately loaded me into the back seats and at full speed through Matasevich. But it was unrealistic to do the central hospitals then, too, it was to get, everything was blocked by parasites. And we stopped at the rock, treated the wound with hydrogen peroxide again. Well, they took me to the emergency hospital, where I was immediately. taken to the operating table. I still remember then this moment, this horror, shock. I need to remove too. Fingers, then they inject me with this general anesthesia, a ventilator mask. I come to myself in the morning, I look there next to the guys. Killed. Where are you? I say. They are. Pushkinskaya, Oman, I look at my leg and my. Gift of speech simply disappears. There is a feeling that the ham is from the Komarovsky market. New factors were added to the protest. Lies in full awareness that no one intends to answer for what happened. I am. Not a bloodthirsty person at all and I don't want any violence. Yet our citizens, we all have families. Children, and just a human life in Hay of each of us. On August 15, in Minsk, they massively said odd-bye to Alexander Tchaikovsky, who was killed at the protests, on the same day the whole country went to large-scale solidarity marches. They also announced the creation of a coordinating council for the peaceful transfer of power. The crisis that developed after the August 10 elections, it is obvious that a political subject was needed in order to somehow overcome the political crisis. And we had an idea and Svetlana Tikhanovskaya initiated the creation of a coordination council as a subject. That could be a platform for initiations and resolution of the crisis. And the continuation of the feeling of unity of the Belarusian people. For the first time, I must say that the expectation of the Belarusian people about unification, it worked very seriously in this cane. The Coordination Council actually became another platform for this broad association, since it includes politicians, civil initiatives, workers, and teachers. That is, compelling different social groups. Large-scale solidarity actions have taken place in almost all countries of the world. The world started talking about Belarus and offered its help. The program of the Belarusian House is intended primarily for such people. For those people who need medical assistance in the form of an operation, in the form of rehabilitation here. 
on the territory of Poland, because many of them are forced not to do medical institutions in Belarus because they are afraid. The practice is that they immediately come for them and can start either a criminal case, or at least an administrative case. And our help is comprehensive assistance. From visa support to paying all the necessary expenses to come here. This includes insurance. Tickets, medications, and if you need additional medical advice. And also rehabilitation for those. People who have been in very harsh conditions. Out of fear, Lukashenko ordered to immediately forcibly drive everyone he could to Minsk. The dictator's plans were to gather at least 70,000 Yabateks in the capital. As a resu, there were so many people that Lukashenko could shout without a microphone. And the freedom marches never ended, turning into a day march of disobedience. The next day, Workers of the largest state-owned enterprises of the country went on strike, the work of the furnaces at BMZ and the mining department at Bel Kalia almost compelly stopped, obviously overestimating his influence, Lukashenko decided to meet for the first time not with a previously prepared crowd, but with a real people. Having jumped into his helicopter, then the dictator was afraid to move on the ground, he arrived at one of the factories, where he tried to talk to the workers. Their reaction needs no comment to this. Day. I, like you, have not quite figured out what the problem is. Go away, away, away. Lukashenko has never experienced such humiliation, realizing that it would not be possible to come to an agreement with the workers. He again relied on the security forces, rewarding more than 300 punishers the next day for impeccable service by name, thereby depriving them of the opportunity to stop, over to the side of the people and return to normal life in the future. You cannot live in fear and believe that this physiological thing will not you down. Any urologist will confirm to you that you end up as men. After you behave like that in the offices. In general, I feel sorry for the officials, but at the same time. I would like to remind them of the well-known British proverb. If you sit on the fence for a long time, you will get a splinter, so you get out of order, to the bright side. It's not scary. Rather, only the first step is terrible. Dot. The feeling of freedom is incredible. And they are waiting for you here, they will welcome you here. Especially professionals. After that, the names of the punishers tried not to shine anymore. A massive denon of the regime servants began, which terrified all the power structures of the country. Even in the courts, they began to testify perjury in balaclavas. Many of them were turned away not only by acquaintances and friends, but also by their wives. There are many methods, but the most basic of course is that the security forces who are still in the system well, in fact, there are quite a few of them. That is, we thought at a certain moment that there were no such ones left, but after a certain time after the start revolution, it became clear that the system connects them with itself. This is money. Loans, a lot of methods of leverage influence on these people, but they are unhappy and they themselves see from the inside that they do not want to participate in this. That is, be it, for Exel, some intelligent, honest person from the investigative committee, who is trying to launch a case on the Oman. But they will not him. Or at least a precinct, anyone you like. And they hear about what they're. Less OD and pleasant comrades, colleagues, so to speak, are talking about. And they themselves inform us about the crimes. They see. And we keep in touch with such people, they really are becoming more and more. The protesters clearly formulated their demands. The resignation of Lukashenko, the holding of fair elections, the release of political prisoners, the investigation of punitive crimes. Every day, chains of solidarity appeared on the streets of cities, workers continued to strike. 
and people came up with new forms of protest. Withdrawing money from bank accounts, buying foreign currency, non-payment of taxes, fines and utilities, hacking of state websites and TV channels, the procedure for recalling their deputies, boycotting the products of Lukashenko's firms, self-organization, mutual assistance, funds and much more continued to turn Belarusians into a nation. The victory was extremely close, there was literally a step left. Mayors of several cities came out at the request of the people, and the authorities of Grodno officially allowed rallies in the city center, the protesters on TV and apologized for the actions of the police. A criminal case was opened against the coordinating council due to an attempt to seize state power. Today and tomorrow, members of the presidium of the coordinating council are summoned for interrogation to the investigative committee in a criminal case. More than 70 of the largest independent sites were blocked, journalists were detained and fined. Kremlin propagandists quickly flew to the regime's aid. These brands are ours, the image of our country. Who, together with the rest of the locals, unleashed a real information war with a foreign people. Don't get lost there with your beliefs. True, Lukashenko's gratitude to the Kremlin in the form of an allegedly intercepted conversation between Berlin and Warsaw about the poisoning of bulk odds looked so ridiculous that even Kremlin propagandists laughed off the tough nut. Mike Nick Nick Mike. Laughing at Lukashenko's nuts not only extended the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, but also brought back to life, in fact, the bulk of the bulk. The laughter associated with coming out of a coma was precisely thanks to him. My wife turned it on, she told me some events and turned on the very recording, like an intercepted conversation between some kind of Bill and Tom between some Polish intelligence and the CIA, connected with my poisoning. She said that it was not clear whether I understood or not, but in someone I laughed for the whole ward with a cheerful, joyful laugh. Despite Continued detentions, threats and intimidation, Belarusians continued to express their protest. Day after day, after a large-scale march of the New Belarus on August 23, the Oman president, together with 15-year-old Baystruck, armed to the teeth, decided to disgrace himself to the whole world, appearing on an empty avenue with a machine gun without shops and thanking his watchdogs for their loyalty. At the same time, of course, not forgetting to offend your people once again. And on the same evening, a living 50,000-strong chain of solidarity was buoy. on the border of Lithuania and Belarus. In Belarus itself, protests continued to take on new forms. A creative march of peace and independence on the birthday of the usurper with gifts and wishes, women's marches with a game of cat and mouse with rooster horses, student exits after September. 1. Separate actions of pensioners and people with disabilities, the large-scale march. Of the heroes' unity and justice only confirmed the persistence and determination of the Belarusians. The last. Step to legitimize one's own person in the eyes of the electorate was the inauguration, which could serve as a pretext for a new wave of protests. 3% Alexander did not find anything smarter than simply passing her in the narrow circle of the anus of the Palace of Independence. The President of the Republic of Belarus is Alexander Gryarevich Lukashenko. No wonder this action is popularly called the Rat. Inauguration of the Naked King. People came out anyway. The evening of September 23 reminded many of the night of August 9, the Punishers dispersed in earnest, but fortunately, tragic incidents were avoided. Largely. Thanks to the mutual assistance and solidarity of the Belarusians. We, medical workers of the Republic of Belarus. Like everyone else today, cannot stay away from the events taking place in our country. When. The real resu of the elections is obvious to everyone and everyone. The guys who rescued people while cooling down. And from the riot police's batons. We raised about $2.4 million in total. Not only the consolidation, self-organization and dedication of the Belarusians during the protests are striking, but also the responsibility and decency. Not a broken display case, not a single overturned or burnt car. Only cleanliness. And order, garbage and shoes removed on the benches. And no matter how Lukashenko and the Russian propagandists bought by him try to threaten, provoke and divide people into constructive and destructive, white, red, white and red, green, friends and foes. No matter how hard they try to convince the electorate that the Yabateks are in the majority. And the protest of drug addicts, alcoholics, prostitutes, radicals, fascists is blown away. The majority of Belarusians remain true to their convictions and continued to publish on Sundays. Despite water cannons, grenades and shots. For People, this has become an excellent and familiar way of rallying, uniting and expressing protest. And for the little cockerels, a real nightmare because of which they have not spent the night at home for the third month in a row.
Rumor has it that the number of visits in the area of Hero Street of the 120th Division in Minsk, where the overwhelming majority of apartments of the capital's Oklomen members are located, has grown significantly lately. Nevertheless, pressure on leaders and protesters continued. Students were sent for a day, pensioners were gassed, and the most active were tried to be expelled from the country. Those who refused were imprisoned. Allegedly, the detention in the center of Minsk of one of the members of the so-called opposition headquarters. And even after three months of violence, the punitive system did not stop. I am ing out. These were the last words of the 31-year-old novel by Bondarenko. Who on the evening of November 11 came out to defend his square of changes in Minsk. For a simple request to stop ripping off white red white ribbons, he had to pay with his life and become another victim of the fascist regime. He was an artist and was very fond of teaching local. Children to draw. Tomorrow, thousands of Belarusians came to the very square of changes. To honor the memory of the murdered. People brought flowers and grieved, put up. Chains of candles and did not the special vehicles of the punishers pass. The drivers honked zealously. But they clearly realized that the regime was not aimed to stop the violence, but if the pressure and torture were relaxed a little, the killings and lawlessness would continue. Come out this Sunday. They think that due to the fact that they beat thousands of people, pack them, we will be scared. Not. In just three months, the number of only recognized political prisoners exceeded 120 people. About 700 criminal cases were opened against the protesters. None of the punishers. The total number of repressed and detained persons amounts to tens of thousands. And even despite this, Belarusians continue to actively perform, yard concerts and tea parties are held. Roads are blocked from time to time and actions of civil disobedience are held in state. Institutions, railways are blocked, cities are decorated with national symbols and graffiti, new protest works are created. The workers join the strikes, the relevance and chains of solidarity have not been lost. People are not afraid anymore. I have already received a message, you're a visionary, write a song that the type of Lukashenko is nay and we won, and everything will come true. Well, perhaps, such intersection of facts seems to be, but I don't know how it can be called, but in Fact it is worth writing. I've already kind of thought about it and am immersed in it, and I'm writing about the fact that we are about to tear everyone apart. People have already developed immunity to any attempts at pressure, the traditional methods of the authorities do not frighten anyone. Over time, people t used to gratuitous detentions, and to shooting, and to water cannons. The last blue whales, by the way, have already begun to be disassembled into details. No attempts to chatter the protesters with hypocritical trips to political prisoners in pre-trial detention on the orders of the Kremlin are no longer working. Everyone understands that this power will not last long. While the inept and chess player is rushing from side to side, randomly rearranging the pawns on the black and white board and pretending that he still has at least some meaning and influence, if you leave, you will not come back. Among the sawdust in the collective farm's head, the realization was apparently lost that it was impossible not to its citizens into their native country. Apparently, sometimes there is no time for laws. A how what laws and authorities is he talking about? Most of the civilized countries are already laughing and do not recognize him as the current president. And the majority of Belarusians have announced an uamatum to the senile grandfather. Sanctions were imposed not only on Lukashenko and his closest retinue, but also on those criminals who until the last thought they were in the shadows. If someone wants to scratch their hands outside the Belarusian borders, we can scratch them at any time. In the power structures, fermentation and destructive suspiciousness continues. Dot. The Slavaki are beginning to realize that Lukashenko is ready to throw them at any moment. Making concessions from the West or Russia. By the way, whom he did not decide to join. I. Have always been for Mui polarity. Russia is irritated by its Mui vector nature and is strained by the awning. Protests. The West is adamant about holding new elections and ending the violence. Immediately. And the system itself seems to have no choice, we just have to not give up. We are a wonderful, intelligent, talented and educated people. Soon all the sacrifices suffered by the Belarusian revolution. All the suffering experienced by almost every Belarusian family will end. And we will win. We will overthrow this regime and finally we will live in a free country. Go on strike. 
Express your disagreement, express your opinion on the current situation, demand the legal fulfillment of your rights. The right to choose, the right to be safe on the street, the right to comfortable working conditions. Demand, demand and demand. Don't give up and don't stop. We have no right to surrender, because our comrades are in prison. We have no right to give up. Because the fate of not only our country, but also the rest of the post-Soviet space, without exaggeration depends on us. Dot. We have changed, we have changed forever. And to that state of slavery, in which we lived for more than 20 years, we will not return anyway. You can live happily and not be afraid to out, not look for better conditions in other countries. Everything is possible and beyond that. In order to achieve this all together, all of us together, we can only lose when we get discouraged, but we must be stubborn. And I am convinced that we will have enough stubbornness, enough willpower to defeat this regime. Together we will win. Take ours. That is, we resist. In any case this lawlessness. Faithful, we can, the first men. Long live Belarus. Long live Belarus.